Hello. I was wondering when that video was going to stop. I forgot how long it was. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am Jessica for Justice, and I am here with Raul, aka Catch List. It is Wednesday, April 17th, and today is a very special day and a special episode of Catch Justice. Tonight, we are going to dedicate the entire episode to Peaches and um, her child that was taken way too soon. Um, Raul has a lot of information to share. I'm going to help with some of the slides, uh, but this is going to be mostly Raul tonight, but I'll help engage in conversation. I'm going to monitor the chat. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be our episode today. I'm really looking forward to uh, learning some of this information. Raul tells me some stuff, but I definitely don't know everything. So some of this stuff I'm also learning with you guys this evening. And look, I've even moved my desk. Uh, I have like an actual streamer background sort of kind of now. So we're getting there. Um, but anyway, I will let Raul get started. I'm going to load up the uh, Google Slides. Hopefully, my yeah. work. <laughs> well, hopefully I can remember words and things to say. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll try to. I'll try to get through it. I, I'm just admiring you and your calmness. Meanwhile, I am like all jittery and all wired and terrified at the same time. Like the, these, these conversations are never or sharing this information has a lot of weight to it too, and and it's never easy. Um, but you know, peaches is a very, very important element in in all of this. And there's a lot of opportunities to really dive in and figure out what happened and why it happened and why there's a million spider webs all around everything related to peaches. So before I start, I definitely want to thank you, Jess, for always being there and being calm. It's very reassuring for me. Um, I also wanted to just advise everyone that, you know, what we share is, is adult content and to um, be wary of any trigger warnings and, you know, take a break, pause, take a breather, um, you know, find, find your center, find your grounding um, before coming back into um, participating. And yes, as far as participating, by all means, please do. If you have questions, um, I'll try to catch it, but uh, I know Jess is on, on top of that, ready to go. And I don't know if I told you, Jess, I, I tried to figure out Nightbot, so that might go into effect at some point, or it may not. I don't know. I'm I'm not the tech person. What is, so, night, what, what is that? What is Nightbot? It'll put in some automatic links out there. So like I put your, your links in automatically and uh, just acknowledging some of the like the mods or or the, Got uh, it. Or the I was gonna say associates or the you know the members and such. Um, and while I said the mods, while I mentioned the mods, I do want to thank each and every one of them. You're all so incredibly amazing. Um, I know I, I'll speak for Jess on this. I'm so incredibly grateful for your support. Um, and um, to anyone, um, take a look at their links, the, the mods, uh, give them a great follow um, and support their, their work too because um, they're ethical creators as well and they mean an awful lot to us. Um, I think I think that's about Ready? it. Yeah, okay. no. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so forgive me. I'm trying to rearrange my screens real quick to make this work so I can still yep. see. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> okay. I have my computer and then I have a monitor. I could do. I, I could go through it if you want me to. The no, no, same no. Way no. I, 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 now I, I just needed to move it over to the other screen. Okay. Okay. Because in order for it to like uh, show properly, I need to put that part in full screen, and I don't want to do that on. There we go. Okay. Click here. All right. <laughs> I got it. I swear we're not going to have any tech issues tonight. All right. Good. Everything's going to be fine. It's all about peaches. We're going to. Okay. Yeah. And we, it's the first time we're devoting an hour, an entire hour to, to it all. So, uh, you know, to a single person, a single story. Um, so this is kind of, you know, set in the bar high for me to, to reach, but um, I'm just going to share the story and 
go from there. So, okay, Peaches, uh, on June 27th, 1997, a man and his son attending a fishing clinic uh, at Hempstead Lake State Park noticed while walking along the trail down a slope towards McDonald Pond, a, a green keeper's hard plastic tote. That's the general area um, where Peaches is. We'll have some more specific images coming up. Um, but that's Hempstead Lake State Park, and it's accessible on the map, and that'll pop up in the show notes at some point or later on or in the in the chat. Uh, as this man and his son walked down closer towards the tote, he recalled, quote, uh, all of a sudden I smelled death, unquote. He retreated and went to find a park con conservation officer who used her baton to open up the container bag container and bag and discovered the remains of a torso within. Aside from this witness's initial statement, he hasn't talked about this for years until he was contacted by Cold Connecticut. Uh, they run a blog who shared this with all of us in 2022. We have added the link to that article in the show notes. Again, all of the, all of the links are in the show notes tonight. Um, so, Inside the tote were the naked, dismembered remains of a light-skinned African-American woman's torso. Her arms, legs, which were cut off below the knee, and head were not in that tote. On her left breast was a tattoo of a heart-shaped peach. The image had a partial bite taken out of it and two green leaves behind it, with two drops falling off of it. On the left facing green leaf and along the bite mark are what appears to be letters, but at this time, any photo enhancements have not been able to discern what or who, if anything or anyone, is named there. It could just be the representation of vines around the peach. So just to show you some of the images on the scene where, um, like on that image there, evidence marker one is right by tire tracks. Um, and we don't know what tire tracks those are, but I'm glad there is an evidence marker there and I'm glad there's photographs of it. And I'm sure there are much more nuanced and detailed photographs, um, in the case file for, for peaches. Uh, this is a grainy blurry original image of, of the area. And it's hard to discern what that is, but that could very well be. Be the tote, if I remember right. And these are investigators um, examining the scene. Okay. Uh, and this was a post in the Daily News, New York Daily News, I believe, um, when that uh, comp contemporary to the discovery. You can go to the picture. That's the original picture of the peach tattoo. And the next image you can see some of the um, possible lettering there. And, or it could just be some of the squiggly vines that are on leaves and such. I'll leave that for the viewer to determine it their own way and whatever they see. Um, nothing official has ever come out of any of the authorities pertaining to that. So um, it's left to be ambiguous for all of us to think about and, and hypothesize. So wrapped within the tote was a red towel and floral pattern quilt. Online sleuths were able to, to identify the floral pattern as a Wamsada brand bedding linen. Wamsada, Wamsada was sold at Walmart and other businesses, and it was also sold by Linens and Things, which had locations on Sunrise Highway in Rockville Center, and also in Massapequa. An autopsy would determine that Peaches was African American, age 16 to 30, with, with a six inch horizontal scar on her lower abdomen, indicating a possible C-section. And for the next 14 years, people would wonder who Peaches was, who was missing their mother, and where that child might be now. There's actually even um, a law enforcement officer commenting how that child would be X amount of ages old at that time um, and wondering what happened to their mom. Okay, 
On April 11, 2011, a plastic bag was discovered by law enforcement continuing the search for Shannon Gilbert. Having five, mo five months before discovered the remains of Maureen Brainerd Barnes, Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amberlyn Costello, and only a week previously the remains of an Asian doe and the toddler further east along the same Ocean Parkway. This plastic bag was located about a mile east of the Jones Beach Needle, which is a tower around the roundabout, um, near Tobey Beach on the north or bay side of Ocean Parkway, uh, and approximately 30 feet from the road. Ocean Parkway, and I think you'll see it in a, a follow-up image, is where all of the victims were found um, on the bay side as well. Within that bag were a pair of severed arms and legs. Also within that bag were two bracelets, relatively popular at that time, yet nearly impossible to track down any original purchase um, location. That's the one, there's a second one, especially that one was very, very popular. And then- I, I used yeah. to have one of these. I this think everyone did. Yeah, this was very, very popular. It's yeah. interesting because at that time, actually a couple of years before that, I was I worked in the jewelry district and we sold that night and day. Now, there are two different kinds, and I'll just stop for a moment on the jewelry, uh, having some experience with that. There were two sort of levels of this type of jewelry, 14 karat, which would often have bigger singular diamonds in wherever the, you can see the the white rhodium diamonds but also the more expensive versions of this would be backed on the inside versus the less expensive which were basically castings put together which were hollowed out underneath and those were often in uh, 10 carat or even 8 carat gold um so it was always it would be interesting to know which version those are, although I have, uh, I have an opinion on that, but it, it's, it's not relevant to, to this. Okay, next one. So, um, but the inability to even track down the um, bracelet would only motivate uh, online sleuths. And by the year 2014, 2015, documentarians Josh Zeman and Rachel Mills, while developing their series, The Killing Season, would begin to question authorities, pretty much forcing them to admit that the body parts found in both Hempstead Lake State Park and those near Tobey Beach were in fact one and the same person. I'm not gonna use an image of Josh or The Killing Season because I'm honestly not sure of copyrights here and I did not wanna get anyone in trouble or infringe upon their um, creative, um, element. Um, but their links are on in the show notes as well. Uh, and then you could just see how, you know, they really did drive a lot of information. They were in contact with NamUs um, and specifically engaged with Todd Matthews, who will just stop for a second and offer our love and condolences and may Todd forever rest in peace. And thank you for the indelible mark he left on, on this community. Okay, wasn't planning on that, but felt I had to. So no one was no one was aware that the extremities found at Tobey, Tobey Beach and the woman's torso found in Hempstead Lake State Park were one and the same until then. Additionally, the remains of toddler, now confirmed to be a girl, was long was the long sought after child of peaches confirmed by DNA. In this image, you can see peaches by the peach colored heart icon on the bottom left of the screen. And all the way at the end at the eight mile marker are two hearts. One of them is toddler. The other one is the location where Valerie Mack was found about 50 yards away from each other. Many of us, uh, oh, let me just finish. Let me go back one second. I'm sorry. Additionally, the remains of the toddler now confirmed to be the girl a girl was a long sought after child of peaches confirmed by DNA. There is no information on how the child died. Other than that, she was found eight miles away from peaches extremities in a blanket with no apparent signs of trauma. And that's a direct quote. 
Many of us online sleuths submitted and continued to submit possible missing persons for peaches. It was disjointed, unorganized, and pretty much invisible. NamUs was not only uh, NamUs was not displaying, for whatever reasons, any exclusions other than Laura Stubbs and Phyllis Rome, who, interestingly enough, I noticed today in preparation for this that. Phyllis Rome is no longer listed as an exclusion on Peaches's page, but is still listed as a missing person. So just some more mystery for the Peaches um, investigation. Peaches is the reason I created what you're looking at, the what I call the submission comparisons database. Uh, the info was all over the place and not centralized. So I added people. At, so as I added people to the map, mm -hmm. I noticed any Gilgo exclusions and I started putting them into this sort of spreadsheet that I put out there. Um, and and it, it just grew not only into Peaches, but at the time I was using it for Fire Island Jane Doe, for um, Asian Doe, for Toddler, and for... Um, dozens of other other victims. Um, I figured it would just be less work for other people to do because it, it was hell for me to discover all of this and compile it and um, information like this should be shared and should be free and accessible. Um, and honestly, I leave that database as I do all my others um, where anyone can comment on it in case they catch something that I'm not yet aware of or find an error and can correct me. You can leave a, uh, a comment on anything, be specific, and I'll find it. I get notified and I can make any adjustments uh, needed. Um, but always open sourced. All my info is open sourced. And that's how it should be for, for the most part. It should. Yeah, it absolutely should be, because that was the biggest issue back in the day with law enforcement is that they didn't cross jurisdictions or share information. And that's why certain ser serial killers were able to get away with what they did for so long, because we they didn't communicate. We didn't share information. And now, you know, we have this vast Internet where we can connect with other people. So it's wonderful yeah. to see that you care so much more about the end goal than like you know, you protecting your work, you want it for other people, you want it out for the right reasons. So yeah, and that's a whole, yeah. And that's a whole other, you know, diatribe or rabbit hole, not necessarily needing to go down tonight. But yeah, you know, in my experience, you know, people are exceptionally protective of what they've uncovered and discovered or, or collected and I, I get it and I you wouldn't want to put anything out there that's irresponsible or if it's truly um, case breaking to a large degree you want to share your information with law enforcement you want to make sure that the right information gets in the right hands but information like this that that can be collaborative ought to be shared and I had no problem doing so. And even some of the slides that I presented here, I asked for permission to use. It, it's important um, and it, it's the right thing to do. So I'm gonna go on to the next topic in this, which is some of the people that come forward regarding peaches. So in 2015, Stephen Cullen, a Connecticut-based tattoo artist, claimed that he tattooed peaches peaches, and he, he put that tattoo on her. Um, he claimed that peaches came in visiting the Bronx with a female friend who lived in the area of Forestville, Connecticut, where his shop is. According to Steve, they mentioned that they were going to a party in East Hartford, Connecticut later that evening. He claimed that Peaches was, quote, sweet, soft-spoken, educated, and easy to talk to, end quote, and told him that she was from Bristol, Connecticut. He goes on to state that he called up NASA and Suffolk counties afterwards um, in 2015 uh, to relay this experience. And I believe that's also in the Killing Season documentary as well. The link to the YouTube thing is in the show notes, but um, I'm going to break away from a minute and I'm going to share my screen uh, and take us there. So bear with me a second. I'm getting better at this, I believe. Share screen. 
Here we go and share. It was a late Saturday night. I was getting ready to close. Two people came in. And it was a simple enough tattoo. And it was just another another person from out of state. And I got tattooed as in 35 countries. So I figured it was just another chance to put somebody out in another state. So I took the extra time out tattooed it. Besides, it was just a really odd tattoo. I've never tattooed a peach. Never mind a peach with a bite taken out of it. And how common is a peach? I don't know, man. Maybe people in Georgia have them. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if people in Georgia have tattoos with peaches with a bite taken out of them. Is that it? Is that the is that the tattoo that you, you did? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's really funny because look at the shape. It's very heart-shaped. And that's, I, I drew a couple of different sets, and that's kind of what she wanted. That's it. In your earlier years of tattooing, you see along this line here, it's nice and smooth. Usually when you come back around that side, you're working the opposite side of what your hand is normally used to flowing. Uh -huh. And you notice that little offset in that line right there. So that to me symbolizes the right-handed tattooist that did that. Huh. So that's how you know it was you. Because I saw a little black and white photo. And I was probably about a one inch photo on a tattoo magazine. I was just flipping through the shit and I just saw this and I said, well, what the hell is this? And I was for calling Nassau police. And I said, man, that was familiar. That was like the tattoo I did. Because I, I, I've never heard of a tattoo done like this before. Stop sharing. And okay, am I back? I'm back. Um, so again, um, as with any potential lettering within the tattoo, I'll leave it for the viewers to determine their thoughts and opinions on, on all of that. On January 12th, 2021, the FBI released the poster for Peaches on their VICAP page of the FBI.gov website. VICAP stands for the Violent Criminal Apprehension Program. Among the available details, something jumped right out at me. Quote, and you can see it highlighted there. Both arms, head, and legs below the knee were severed and not recovered until 2011 in Jones Beach State Park, end quote. Say what? Both arms, head, and legs were not recovered until 2011. Are they saying her head was recovered? Questioned a lot. Uh, furthermore, on this poster, they state that Peaches had brown hair and brown eyes. Not probably had brown eyes, but had brown eyes. Now, I don't know. I'm not the brightest person. I'm sure there's plenty of people that would agree with that statement. But how do you know someone has brown eyes if their head has not been recovered. They stated unequivocally. So I'm kind of confused by that to this day. So I contacted the FBI regarding this. And while they confirmed her head has yet to be recovered, they still would not update the verbiage on the poster, which just further adds to the whole conundrum surrounding all things peaches. And, you know, when I use the phrase curious, it, it's done so with a whole lot of different <laughs> meanings behind the word curious. Okay. Um, so the Gilgo News website was created in 2020 to be a clearinghouse of official information that Suffolk County Police Department was sharing publicly. The site shared pictures of each victim with a bio on each and also listed contemporary evidence. It was also intriguing who was missing from the site, Peaches. Now, one could argue, and we all did, that Peaches isn't there because she was found in Nassau County. Her torso was in Hempstead Lake Park, that's Nassau County. Her extremities found uh, at Tobey Beach, which is Nassau County. Now, while Karen Vergata's skull was found in Nassau County, her legs were found in Suffolk, Karen or 
formerly known as Fire Island Jane Doe, wasn't on the Gilgo News website either. She was mentioned in the initial launch summary, but that was it. Toddler is listed on the Gilgo News website. And then to confuse us all even more, the announcement that Fire Island Jane Doe was Karen Vegada was provided to us by Suffolk County District Attorney Ray Tierney. So I don't know what's going on with Nassau County, Suffolk County. It is very, very interesting, this whole dynamic behind it all, um, and something I hope we can get some enlightenment on. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of things that just don't make sense. And yeah, I agree. How do you, And you can't just assume that just because she's African-American that she has brown eyes because there are other colors that exist. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's very weird. Somewhere in my memory, there's a percentage of African American with different color eyes. Now brown is certainly predominant as a percentage, um, but it's not as minimal to have a different set of eye color. Um within the, the African-American community across the planet, not just in the US, across the planet. Uh, what is interesting is that on any ulterior, any alternative color African-Americans have, it is predominantly blue or hazel. And hazel eyes um, factors prominently in many, uh, if not, in fact, all of the less victims, certainly the attributed Gilgo 4. Yeah. On October 7th, 2022, Mobile and Alabama sheriffs in tandem with the FBI announced the genetic link to peaches in some form. They announced that Elijah Liege, Howell or Howard had been linked in some fashion to peaches and this sent ripples through the online communities and everyone was searching everywhere for relatives. We all dove into the history of Elijah and while it isn't necessarily relevant to this examination, perhaps at a future episode, once peaches gets her name back and we learn who she was and where her story is, we will revisit that. Over a year and a half later, we still do not know who peaches is. Peaches is not defined by her tattoo, although that's all we know of her as. Peaches is not defined by what happened to her or how she was discovered. Peaches is a young woman, a young mom. She is a daughter to someone. She was a mom to someone. I don't often talk about Peaches. It has been done over and over again. But for me, this year was different. The anniversary of her extremities a, a week or so ago, um, really sparked something in me to get her out there, uh, to keep her out there until we understand her life and hopefully hold someone accountable for her death. Only then can we, and we should, let her memory belong to her family and not the glorification of gory details or the sensationalized attention getters for true grime, fodder for once respected researchers, now conspiracy theorists, making absurdly tenuous connections or a political football to be bounced between counties and law enforcement agencies. Peaches. Yeah. Uh, thank you for allowing me to, 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 to share that. Um, I wanted to keep it um, under a half hour. Uh, I, I'm sure there are questions. And if there are, I'd be happy to answer or share or direct um, anyone to people um, more resource than myself. Um, and yeah, I mean, Peaches is heavy. Yeah, it's and it's just horrible to know what happened to her. And then they're wondering, thinking that her child is wondering what happened to their mother and then finding out that the child suffered a similar fate. It's, it's, it is, it's very heavy. It's, it's horrible. Uh, how did they figure out, like, who is this person, Elijah? Have they not said who he is? They're just no. saying, 
Okay. They just said that there's some sort of genetic link. We don't know if, I mean, everyone's, you know, speculated that it's a grandfather, second uncle, father. It, there had been theories that, you know, Peaches was a child out of, uh, out of wedlock. Um, the way Elijah died is not not necessarily suspicious, but leaves uh, clearly not only leaves an open door, kicks down the door for hypotheticals to to happen. He died in a car with someone other than his wife at the time, and it, it's left a whole element of of you know, theories that to populate out, but there hasn't been uh, any link since Elijah Howard to Peaches, other than that there is a link of some unknown factor. And, you know, all we can do is hope and pray that, you know, I, I mean, if the FBI can get this close, then it, somebody's got to get closer and what better lab of experts um, than the, the FBI. So I don't know if she's been identified. There's been rumors since within a couple of months of the Mobile, Alabama posting that there, there um, that she had been identified, but not sure, never officially corroborated. And, you know, for every 10 people saying she's been identified, you know, you have to go back and rely on facts and logic and say that maybe she hasn't. And I don't know if she has at this moment. Um, if, if we assume she's been identified why are we holding back? Now, to be fair, the identification of Karen Vagata was known but not released for over a year. And running concurrently with that knowledge of Karen Vagata was the, the discovery and naming of, at least within law enforcement, uh, the task force of the name Rex Hurman. So holding on to Karen's announcement could have been just because they were investigating the link. You have 11 bodies along Ocean Parkway and you find a common denominator to at least four initially, then you have to do your due diligence and, and, investigate everything and you know i have faith in the task force to do so i don't i don't know what we know that nassau county is part of the task force we know that suffolk county is state troopers are um, the sheriff we we get that representative from the fbi but you know where is her case who speaks for peaches right you know that's what bothers me who's speaking for peaches and everything that you're saying makes sense that maybe she is potentially another victim in this case that they're trying to protect and not release the information but all we can do is speculate at this point until they come out with an identification and she deserves to be identified. Her child deserves to be identified. They deserve to rest and, and be with their family. And that's why it's so important for people to participate in things like Jed match and do the DNA testing. If you do 23 me, if you do ancestry.com upload your DNA to Jed match, be willing to give your DNA because I mean, honestly, like, I don't care. The government, if the government really wants my DNA, they're going to get it regardless. So I might as well just give it to them, you know? Uh, but just I think you piece across. Right. Like, well, and my mom did like one of those anti kidnap kits when I was a kid with like the fingerprint and photo and a swab yeah. anyway. So the government already had all that stuff since I was like 11. So I've already, I did a 23andMe test. I am going to upload it to GEDmatch. Uh, and I already wore, I posted on Facebook. I'm like, if you're related to me, I'm uploading this just so you know. Uh, I, I don't think you've done anything, but just fair warning. 
Mm -hmm. um, but everybody should upload because you never know. You never know. There could be some distant relative or something that you could help solve uh, a missing person, uh, unidentified person, a homicide. You, you never know. And yeah, I have no problem with it. I know other people get weird with their, their DNA and stuff. And I get that, but um, has, do you, do you know if, uh, oh God, I don't know why I can never remember the name of the company. The awesome. it, Yes. Paragon. Are they involved with this at all? So Othram was part of the identification of Karen Vagata. Okay. So they were a part of that. Everything else is relatively tight-lipped. Othram was also a part of unmasking the murder of Eve Wilkowitz from 1980. Um, and, and as far as uploading DNA or even attempting to submit it, um, Minorities and people of color are notoriously underrepresented in the DNA sphere. Um, I think it's important that people know what I'm going to say because it is it is huge. If you can review your counties or cities uh, or min municipals medical examiner's office, Oftentimes they will run periods of free DNA submissions because they want to clear the backlog of unidentified. And they'll do that often, frequently, for free. And that is for, for folks that are, are financially challenged but need answers, that is huge. I also know of several groups on Facebook um, where they will pay for someone and ship a, a 23andMe kit to them for free. And I think that's such a beautiful way to represent advocacy and action. Like that is a viable way to assist. And, um, you know, my map right now is has been focusing predominantly on getting all the unidentified in the U.S. on there. And, you know, I'm at 11,000. I have another 4,000 to get through before it's completed. And I'd love to start adding more resolved to those to those people um, and ultimately remove them completely from the map. And like I said in previous conversations, I'd love to see my map become wholly ir irrelevant and useless and not needed anymore. But I can't and I won't stop until I get that. Uh, I, I meet that threshold and continue to maintain that. And then I'll start on the on the missing on the missing persons across the country, which will, is daunting in and of itself. But you know, the point is, is that there are resources available. And if you're not sure, you know, drop us a message, uh, you know, in the comments um, after the show. Um, that way, we'll see it and we can answer it, and it would stay historically on there for other people to reference in the future. And, um, you know, solving these cold cases is so important. Um, you know, for me, this whole journey originated along Ocean Parkway. I started, you know, with putting Shannon on that map and, and got every single one of them on the map. And it, and it has grown, you know, so much more from that. But um, the Ocean Parkway victims deserve this attention they deserve the representation they deserve you know some ethical conveyance of of what happened to them and in hindsight as we learn about their lives we can then go on and talk about that in in a healthy and uh, memorial way honoring their lives not the circumstances around their deaths and that that's as important to you, I know, Jess, as it is to me. Yeah, I, I fully agree. And uh, kind of going back to, uh, you know, minorities not doing the DNA as much, I think some of that also goes into distrust of the government and the system. And I can't really blame minorities for right. that. We don't exactly have the best history 
uh, with the things that the country has done. Um, and I understand that as a, a child of a, an immigrant, you know, being distrustful of the government and the system and police and things like that. Um, but we, we really do have to look past certain things if we want a resolution because somebody out there has the DNA that's attached to these cases. Somebody out there. And then in Chicago, they only have a 50% closure rate with their homicides. And I'm sure that has to do partially, you know, nobody wants to talk to the police, the stop snitching culture and things like that. And I'm not saying to trust the police. It's not about the police. It's about getting answers for the victims' families. And it's so complicated. I don't even, it's like, I don't even know what to do to, to fix it because of that. There is such a distrust for law enforcement, but not all of law enforcement is bad either. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I recently got slammed for, for this. I, I spent the first number of years when I started going more public on social media, I, I literally attacked Suffolk County honestly, every single day, you know, if they posted on their Instagram or Twitter that they stopped traffic on the Northern State Parkway, so, a, 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 you know, a duck and their ducklings can cross the highway, you know, I'm like, well, how about solving some goddamn serial murders, you know, uh, on the South Shore? Like, how about doing that? So I attack them relentlessly. And, um, you know, ever since the arrest and looking at the the quality of the evidence that they've lined up and 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 have amassed against him against rex i i i've learned to believe in you know the professionalism and the empathy of law enforcement having spoken with several um i give a whole lot more respect to them. It doesn't mean, you know, that I can't lambaste the Suffolk County of, you know, James Burke era. Um, they right. deserve it. You know, not only of the James Burke ever, but anything in the last 150 years is, is open target, if you ask me. Um, but, you know, the, the sins of the past, why we should be wary of them in the present, doesn't necessarily mean that they're guilty of the same corruption or the same level right, right. of of disinformation. Well, disinformation is always going to be, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's you know some some big hide and go seek going on. Um, right. And if I'm wrong, I'll eat the hat that I'm wearing. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I think that we definitely have to give law enforcement a chance. You know, and because in, in my situation, I had a very negative experience with law enforcement. I had a detective that I did not find empathetic, but I have met so many wonderful detectives and officers, lieutenants. Cat, like I've met so many wonderful people in law enforcement that truly do care for what they're doing. Of, of course, there's going to be, you know, some that shouldn't be in the job or have been in the job too long, but that's with any, any role. And I just, I just wish people would see that it's really not so much about the law enforcement. It's about the victim. And regardless of what's going on there, we need to get answers for the family. And yeah, we definitely need to put pressure on law enforcement respectfully uh, because we don't want to, um, we don't want to be enemies with law enforcement, right? Like right now in Harris County, there's a lot going on in Harris County and I yeah. could be on them every second of every day, but um, I, I can't do that because then they wouldn't talk to me, you know, like I have to talk to them to help advocate for victims, families. We all have to get along. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's kind of like, you know, that cousin that you run into at Thanksgiving and you just have to <laughs> be able to get along and stuff. We just, we have to be cordial. We have to work together if we want anything to be done. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to question things. We just have to be respectful with one another and have that communication in the conversation. Um, 
And that goes for everybody that's involved in, in true crime or any that goes with law enforcement, that goes with uh, true crime people that are, you know, looking up stuff or Internet sleuths or whatever they're called. I don't, I don't know. What do, what do we call ourselves that do that? Is that what it is? I don't. <laughs> I just use researcher. I mean, I'll let, I'll let my detractors come up with names for me. They have no problem doing that. <laughs> Nightbot is being mean. Nightbot. Oh, so I, I'll undo it. Or if, if someone else can figure it out, <laughs> no, I, we got to get to Jay. Jay will help us it's, with that. It's funny. It's, it's, is uh, it being it, mean? I don't see it. So I don't it know. Told, it doing. told Lola's mom she was spamming emojis. She's not. It, I told her she's fine. It's okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so Nightbot's being sorry, a little Lola's cranky. Mom. It's not, it's not you. Don't worry. Um, right. Yes. And make sure everybody like, like it. Make sure you subscribe. We've gotten so many subscribers very quickly, very, very quickly on this channel. It's very much appreciated. You guys are amazing. I love you all so, so very much. Because, like, you're, this channel's almost caught up with my personal channel. And this channel's not been live as anywhere near as long as my channel. So this one is doing great. I think we have like what, 230 or something like that. Something. Thanks, yeah. Man. We're doing pretty good with the subscription. So I very much appreciate you all on that and everybody go get your DNA, <laughs> DNA tested. Uh, if you have, and check for, uh, if you're interested in doing 23 and me and stuff like that, they always have, um, uh, sales around right. holidays like St. Patrick's Day they had a sale uh Christmas stuff like that they always have sales going on then so that's the best time to buy that's when I got 23 and me and it came with I got the 23 and me that came with like the health test and um all that stuff and it says like you're there's a 72% chance that your eyes are this color um but sometimes it's not totally accurate because like it said, I'm supposed to have freckles and some other stuff that I don't have. Um, but yeah, everyone's <laughs> everyone's talking about Nightbot. Nightbot oh my God, I'm not, sorry about Nightbot. <laughs> no, it's they're just Nightbot's not doing anything, but they're talking about it. Like Nightbot's only as good as the behavior instructions you give it. Um, oh, so that, like, yeah, see, it's my fault. See. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, upload Donna. Upload your 23 and Me. Yes. I need to. I am gonna upload mine to Jed Match. I talked. Jed Match was at CrimeCon, uh, and so was the DNA company with an O that I can never remember now for some Anthrum. reason. Someday Anthrum. I'll remember. Anthrum. <laughs> Anthrum. Uh, Anthrum. Yeah, that one. That one was there. They had a presentation. So if you're going to CrimeCon, these different companies will likely be there. So if you have questions about these certain things with DNA and those kinds of things, um, definitely go to those shows. It, I was able to talk to somebody from GEDmatch uh, for a while, and I have some packets of information somewhere. I've moved. I don't know where they are, but I have them. Uh, it's very interesting information, for sure. <laughs> they're, 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 I think the people are having fun making fun of Nightbot. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, what was I going to say about... Um... And also remember, it's not like your DNA. Once you once you upload it to GEDmatch or authorize it to go to GEDmatch, it's not like it's going to be canvassed all over the place. States have their own very unique and often very restrictive rules around that. New York State is one of those states, as frustrating as that can be. So um, it will always do somebody good somewhere at the end of the day. And go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. And I, it's, it's good for you to learn about yourself as a person too. I highly suggest doing like the health test ones because it, there's some things that I thought, but it confirmed it, um, which is uh, cilantro does taste like soap to me. Uh, and that is, I have that genetic trait and this test proved that to me that I have the genetic trait that I'm not crazy that it, it is me. I'm. There's something wrong with me. Uh, what did you want to survey for, Jen? Can we do a poll on what? What do we want to poll? Of we can do a poll. I yeah, I can do polls. I fi finally figured out how to do polls. It's you have to do it through YouTube. That's what, what the problem was. Do we need to do a poll? What are we? <laughs> what are we polling? <laughs> I oh, don't so know. 
I yeah. So let's a moment on the cilantro thing. Like you're half Cuban, I'm half Cuban. I I cook. I live with cilantro practically. Um, so it, I guess that's kind of random. <laughs> yeah, I I have never liked cilantro. I never. Yeah, I I never liked it. Thankfully, like. I mean, Cuban food uses cilantro, but not like Mexican food does. Yeah. And like with Cuban food, there's like bean, black beans, rice, uh, Cuban bread, coffee, uh, plantains, you know, and then a beef or chicken or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's really it. Nothing spicy, nothing crazy. Like that's why like I love Cuban food, but like Mexican food, there's so much uh, cilantro and uh, it's much more spicier. Um, my favorites when my roommate's like, oh, this isn't bad. I'm like, this hurts my mouth and I can do spicy. I can do spicy, but not, yeah, not on that level. And yeah, oh, a cilantro pole. Okay. You guys want to do a cilantro pole? I can do that. Okay. So uh, I just want to thank everyone, um, for being with us tonight. I want to thank Jess for, um, allowing an hour to be devoted towards peaches. I, I always try to be equitable and, and not monopolize the time but you were you were so generous in 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 sharing uh sharing uh the time for for peaches and cilantro and nightbot but <laughs> uh i i i, I just want to like for me i just want to end that people like peaches mattered regardless of anything anybody comes up with as a theory um None of it matters at the end of the day, other than bringing her name back and allowing her to rest in peace with her daughter, wherever home is for them. And um, I am, I'm praying for that day. And I think it, I hope it comes soon. I think it will come soon. Uh, I don't know what we're waiting for, but I, I'm optimistic, uh, eternally optimistic. And and again, thank you for allowing me to talk about peaches. Um, after this show, please follow. I, once we get enough subscribers, we'll be able to portal right into the show. But Seeking Justice, um, they're absolute, in my opinion, groundbreaking deep dive into the insanely suspicious, I'm just going to say, murder of, of Dawn Pacella. She was a whistleblower, mm -hmm. and um, the day she was supposed to testify uh, against the government as a witness for the defense, she's found murdered. Yeah, it, the, the whole thing with that case, it's just her alcohol content. Yeah, like, that alone is suspect. Oh, Nightbot is is scolding Donna, going after Lola again. We'll have we'll figure that out later. But um, yeah, it's when they when I heard the alcohol content, it yeah. it made me think about when I learned that um, trying to figure out how to say this delicately, that people put alcohol up their butt. Yeah, there's a lot um, of alternative ingestion processes. Yeah, and then I even heard of like high school girls soaking tampons and alcohol. Like, there's other ways to get alcohol in the system. Uh, so it's not like somebody had to like pour it down her throat. You know, there's so many things that could have happened to this poor woman, and the fact that nobody looked into it and thought that, you know, there was none of this other stuff that went with it. It just, it doesn't make sense. And the fact that they're saying it was totally a normal thing is insane to me. And that's why I'm so glad that they're uh, digging into this because she wouldn't have been able to function with that much it, yeah. it just it literally doesn't make sense i've never was barely 100 pounds she was tiny petite barely 100 yeah. pounds and that level of blood alcohol is just not logical considering if she died in that apartment of hers it in and of itself is a a way too pristine environment mm-hmm you know, they've had incredible guests from Detective Dawes to the incomparable Tony Viola. 
Um, and his compilation of evidence is is mind boggling. I really encourage everyone to to follow uh, and go see the Seeking Justice show on Don Pacella. Joe was on it last week. Um, shameless plug, but I'm going to be on it next week um, just to share my observations too. I've been mod moderating their their podcast, and it's just been absolutely in incredible like those ladies have done brilliant work dana andrea um and lexi have been just absolutely incredible and they you know they do it with family participation as well mm -hmm. I mean, they had dawn's parents on there which was one of the i mean after our show where i cried i i feel right i can breathe during the moderation of their show but silly me i i i was hysterical like that there's such beautiful, genuine people and evil is all over this world. And I cannot look at the chat anymore because every attack at Nightbot has me ready to start laughing. I'm so sorry, everyone, for Nightbot. <laughs> uh, I will get assistance. Um, much more yeah, Joe's going to help you. <laughs> Joe's going to help you rate him in. He already said that he's going to help with that. But yeah, Nightbot's feistier than me. And that's <laughs> That's like, I, I'm a very like calm, gentle person, but like at a certain point, you know, I'm not. And, uh, Nightbot needs to, Nightbot's had some drinks or something. She, she needs to chill out. Um, Nightbot but, is crazy. Uh, so I did the, the survey for does cilantro taste like soap to you? We got 18 votes. 22% said yes. And 78% said no. I'm glad to know that I am not the only one. I'm sorry for those of you that also suffer with the soap uh, gene. It sucks, but it is what it is, right? There's worse things. Um, I put the link multiple times to our friends over at Seeking Justice. Make sure to go over there. They're about to go get started. Um, so I'll give you guys like a minute before they get started so you can take a potty break or something. <laughs> <laughs> or go hang out in their chat. You guys are so very much appreciated. I love you all. And we appreciate your support so very, very much. You all are wonderful. We love you. And I love you, Raul. And I love spending my Wednesday evenings here with you guys. And I will see you all in the Seek. I had to. I almost said catching justice. It's catch justice and seeking justice. I'll catch you all in the seeking justice chat. Do you have anything else to say tonight? Yes. Tomorrow night at six p.m. I guess it's Central Standard Time. Is your show? Who? Isn't it yours? No. No. My, I'm doing one on Monday. Oh, it's Monday. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Thanks for the reminder. I am doing a live stream on my channel on Monday to talk about my story, my life, um, Austin's story, but I'm going to get into the beginning of my life and my story. Unfortunately, my life wasn't easy even before Austin was murdered. There's been a lot in my life, uh, so I would like to share it with you. I haven't been able to do so to tell my entire story publicly, so I'm going to start that. Uh, it, next week is Victims Crime Week, or Crime Victims, Crime Victims Rights Week. Uh, so I'm also going to be talking about some of the laws that were passed to protect uh, victims. But yes, I'm going to start that series on Monday. It's 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you guys go over to Seeking Justice. There's the link again. And that's it, right? Right. <laughs> that's it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> we, uh, we adore you and appreciate your um, patronage. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.